Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Mike Benitez, and today we're gonna do another ship bales video. But today we're gonna do of a fate. We're gonna do a video of a famous American freighter. She was the largest ever sunk in Lake Superior, and she remains the most famous because of a song. And this ship was called the SS Edmund Fitzgerald. Let's get on the story, shall we? Edmund Fitzgerald was built from 1957 to 1958 on River Rogue, Michigan. However, on June 7, 1958, when the ship was launched, there was two problems. One, the blocks holding the ship, the workers had, had trouble removing them, which delayed the launch by 36 minutes. And Elizabeth Fitzgerald, the wife of Edmund Fitzgerald, the name of the ship, had trouble um, smashing a... Uh, champagne bottle onto the, onto the side of the ship. It took her three times to do it. This uh, champagne bottle smashing was uh, was part of a celebration whenever a ship was launched. The up the the up uh, the upcoming clip you'll see now will be of of the ship's launched. Does anyone know where the love of God goes when the waves turn the nuts to our wings? The searchers all say they'd have made way to stay if they put 15 more miles behind her. I'll explain the whole song in a little bit, but it is. Uh, but what happened after the launch? After the ship, uh, when the ship was launched, she almost hit the dark side on the other side of the river. A man suffered a heart attack because of this, and later died in a hospital. This was shrugged off as he, as people said that the Evan Fitzgerald climbed up, a, was just struggling up to the water like a giant. And she was a true giant. When the Fitzgerald was built, she was the proudest of all of all Great Lakes ships and certainly the biggest. This title named her Queen of the of the Great Lakes. She had many nicknames. The these nicknames include this nickname include Fids, Mighty Mighty Fids, Big Fids, Pride of the American Side, Toledo Express, and Titanic of the Great Lakes. Being a large freighter and having only a, a one pr propeller screw, she had a top speed of over fourteen of fourteen knots. The slow, slow, but she's a freighter. The ship's usual route consists of of Wisconsin, from Wisconsin with um from Superior, Wisconsin, to Toledo, Ohio. After nine days of sea trials, the the Fitzgerald was given to the uh, to the Og the Ogle Bay Norton Corporation, where where it was named their flagship of the Columbia of the Columbia of the Columbia Transportation Fleet. The Fitzgerald was a mighty workhorse. Her her largest tonnage, her her largest tonnage ever uh, ever carried was to 27,402 tons of iron ore in 1969. She, she was a pretty big ship to carry such a load. However, she was replaced as largest uh, um, Great Lakes liner, uh, a Great Lakes uh, freighter, when that was taken over by the Murray Bay. Still, the Fitzgerald was a pretty darn good ship. From her fr first voyage until a few weeks uh, before her sinking, she um, passengers were allowed to come on board in the voyages as company guests. The captain was known to uh, play music on the ship's intercom, which was pretty popular. Th this was actually a pretty darn good ship for pass uh, for passengers to be on. I would want to be a I would want to be on this ship, but sadly. All ships come to an end, and sadly, the Fitzgerald had a full full career ahead of her, but was lo but was shattered when she went down. On November ninth, nineteen seventy five, at two at two fifteen p.m., under the command of Ernest um, M. McSorley, the Emma Fitzgerald left Superior, Michi uh, Superior, Michigan, for no. Uh, Superior left Superior for for Detroit, carrying twenty six thousand eleven uh, one hundred and sixteen tons of talc uh, night ore pellets. 
Later, at 5 p.m., the M. Fitzgerald joined up with the with another freighter, the Arthur M. Anderson, under the command of Bernie Cooper. Both ships, uh, both ships ga- uh, uh, heard that a major storm was coming. It would come on the next day, on November 10th, 9- 1975. One of these ships would make it out alive. On November 10th, the next day, the two ships entered the storm. It was the worst storm they have ever been ever had encountered, and waves would soon be rocking the two ships. Emma Fitzgerald was farther ahead of the uh, Anderson and only had communication by radio and wireless. Uh, I mean radar. Soon on that night, the ra- the the Fitzgerald lost radar. Er, lost radar and was blind. So, McSquirly asked Cooper of the Anderson to keep track of them, 10 miles uh, ten miles away. So, she tried to uh, take them to Whitefish Bay, but it never worked. After giving the order that no, that no, one, would be, no one would be allowed on deck, the, a, ra- a railing broke after water hit the ship. The ship uh, continued a bad list. Captain McSquirly, uh, Ordered the Anderson to come closer so she will, uh, she will become help. At seven ten p.m. May November tenth, nineteen seventy five, Miss Gorley ga- gave the Anderson a final message: "We are holding our own." Radar and radio contact was soon lost, and the Fitzgerald was lost forever. Rescuers were sent out, but nothing was found of the Fitzgerald or her twenty nine crew. The only thing that was found of the ship was this battered lifeboat. Four days later, the wreck would be found in horrible condition. What is worse, that there were no survivors of the 29 crew of the Fitzgerald. The Arthur M. Anderson still serves today, but thanks to a song, the Emma Fitzgerald is remembered. In 1976, Gordon Lightfoot released the song Wreck of the Emma Fitzgerald in honor of the ship. We shall end this video for a few for a few words of the song